Maniacs, welcome back to the channel. Your local bedhead here. We are going to be diving into another paranormal investigation reaction. It's been a while. It's been a while. Grant you, I have been a very busy person. <laughs> That's how I want to start. I've been a very busy person. And also, I've been trying to spread my wings a little bit, react to some different things here and there, kind of take a refresher, and I need to take a break from some of this paranormal stuff. It can be draining. Let's just say that. It can be draining at some points. You know, talking about certain things that are happening, things that I just don't want to overlook, things I want to really bring light to and talk about because I think it's important to bring light and, uh, and, and important to talk about certain things. It's interesting. It's been a journey to say the least, to go from really watching paranormal investigations, having a lot of fun, of course, doing it, and still do having fun, but now, like, watching paranormal investigations and really sitting down trying to figure things out and make sense of things. Because, let's be real, I think a lot of us are becoming more aware, like, self-aware, of just things that just don't really add up and things that might be over-exaggerated. And even if some of these paranormal investigators aren't really too aware of it, but they're acting off of emotion in general, it's important for us to kind of realize that not everything is what it seems. And, and I think some things are paranormal for sure. And I think that we're always catching new things. And I'm very excited, you know, to explore that more. But at the same time, I'm also somebody who wants to make sure that you are... I want you to feel comfortable hearing my thoughts. And if I just go ahead and buy everything I see, I don't feel like at the end of the day that's going to benefit me too well. I'm not going to learn anything from this. I'm just going to accept everything. And that's just not as intriguing to me. So I want to go ahead and clarify something right now. Even if I, let's say, don't agree with a paranormal investigation or maybe agree with something certain like a method they're using or some things like this or trying to make sense of something that I really don't think has much sense, there's nothing to make sense of, I don't want them to take it personally, you know? It's, it's from a new channel. We are diving into another new channel. This is Ghost Theory, and one of the reasons why I wanted to jump into this investigation was because Casper Sites is a part of this investigation. And I'm a pretty big Casper Sites fan. I think he, he reminds me a lot of the me that would react to stuff and have fun doing it. And I do have fun reacting to stuff. I want to go out there and debunk things and prove if things are paranormal or, or really paranormal or not paranormal. And... And, you know, watching stuff online and watching creepy videos will always be fun to me. I'll always have a cherishable side that will be like, ah, that was really creepy. That was really cool how they did that. But there's also a side of me that's very much not for people lying to their audiences to get money and coming off honest, but lying to their faces. The people who will get them to that success, they would rather lie to their faces instead of being honest. Even when they say they're being honest, they're not honest. And that's a scary concept to me. That is, unfortunately, it shows that people will do anything to get to that, that realm of success. And look, at the same time, we live in a world where success is so important. People want to be successful. But I want to do it in a way that's honest. Even if I lose people, and I will lose people, even if I lose people, I want it to be an honest road. Casper Sites and me. I feel Casper Sites is an honest guy. Right? I think he genuinely enjoys what he does. Man, if you ever watch this, I want to let you know if there's something I disagree with or something I speak out about in this video, I don't want you to take it personally. I never want anybody to take it personally. I give constructive criticism where I feel like it's due. And sometimes people take it wrong. And I hope that's not the case. And no, it's not me rolling over, letting him scratch my belly. Uh, I'm not that. No, I'm not scared of anybody's, you know, if anybody wants to get mad at me for what I say, that's fine. This is all just constructive criticism. I'm not out here to make enemies. It's just something I can't help myself. When I see something I don't agree with, I say it. And I just want you to be prepared for that. So anyways, guys, go support the original video. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will do more reactions to this. You guys know the drill. If it gets over 100 likes, I will continue to react to this guy's, uh, these guys' content. And again, go support the original video. Show them a lot of love. Go support Casper Sight and Ghost Theory. I'm going to go ahead and dive into this, guys, and I'll tell you my thoughts during and, of course, after the video. Oh, God. I thought you'd just been possessed. Really? That's freaky deaky, mate. I don't think that's a good idea to go up there. If that is a staircase, that's from every single horror mover ever. Mover. Movie, <laughs> in fact. Why did that sound like someone just walked at us? Got the fucking chicken, mate. <laughs> Jesus, man. Ghost Theory. Hello and welcome to the Ghost Theory 100,000 subscriber special. Awesome! This week, we met up with Sir David Attenborough himself for some incredible nature facts. That is a female stinging nettle. Do you know how I know that? Because you're pissed. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's droopy. 
That's correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Ghost Theory. We you need to start that again, so. Yeah. You need, come on, get the, get the energy, get the energy. Honestly. Fucking amateurs, seriously. Uh, just, just, I mean, who is that? <laughs> Action. <laughs> like, hello and welcome to another episode of Ghost Theory. I'm Elliot and that is not Joe. And we were supposed to be meeting up with someone special, um, someone from Paranormal Files, but unfortunately they can come, so. Um, yeah, we've got this guy instead. Yeah. So, um, there's, uh, there's... Hang on a second. Wow. Hang on. Wow. It, that's cusper sight. Let's do that again. Start it again, and then I can be like this and just... <laughs> oh, there's the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I, I, actually, I have yeah. done this before. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ben. Cusper sight, a.k.a. Cusper sight, a.k.a. Ben. Oh, it's yeah, so good to be here. Genuinely, like, I am super excited about this. So thank you for having me. And to everybody in the community of Ghost Theory... It is Ghost Theory, isn't it? Joking. Hello. Honestly. How is he? G he's giving it back. Isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> We're all used to this. Yeah. It's Can't all... be mean to us as well. That's not how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought I was going on um, Twin Paranormal. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah, but you only do the best, don't you? So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's <laughs> it, mate. Yeah. But they wouldn't have you either. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, right, okay, this is 20 minutes of just yeah. killing just me. Insults. Right, good. Let's actually have a look. Oh, this is Casper's side, by the way. Oh, yeah. We are actually incredibly happy to have him with us. We are, yeah. It's been a hell of a journey. Um, it's, it's, we've been at 400 million miles for you because you live on the arse end of f*** all. Yeah, they, they invited me here on the day when everybody leaves Glastonbury. So a <laughs> three and a half hour journey ended up a seven and a half hour journey. Oh my God. Here in this beautiful <laughs> <laughs> location. And I, I haven't, I only know of one person that's done this. You probably know of loads of people that have done yes. this, but this is a beautiful, beautiful home. Can we actually have a look around? Yes. Because I'm getting angry now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is the lounge. Actually, yeah, you do it. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing this is the lounge. Mm. Um, I've never been here before. <laughs> Look at me. To be honest, I don't know. I mean, it's it got to be right. It's one of those houses. It just looks it's, like it's every room is going to be like this. To be fair, we have to also just say that this is literally the first room that we've just walked in. At. Yeah. yeah, I've, yeah. Not, I've obviously looked down. The, there's a corridor there. Mm. Yeah. But, but we don't um, know. But what I will say, and I, I am not just saying this. I don't know whether it's because like this is all sort of new to me and it's a little bit uh, like I'm on the edge <laughs> of oh, glory. Yeah. But mm. when I came in here, I did feel a little bit like a it's bit like that behind pie. me, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do think, and I know I, I get what he's saying. I get what he's saying. He does, he wants to make sure he's not just saying it to say it. But I think it's almost an unavoidable feeling you're gonna get when going on a ghost hunt is that unavoidable feeling that the energy is just changed. Because you are doing a ghost hunt. I mean, it is a paranormal investigation. You are putting yourself in the possibility of like actually being in the presence of deceased people, right? I mean. That is a real thing that's going to be in the back of your mind no matter what. So I, I do I do understand where he's saying, like, he's not saying it to just say it because I think, you know, he wants to establish that he's not just, it's not something that he's normally just thinking about. But I think it's no matter what you do, it's going to be in the back of your mind, especially when you're in a, bu a building like this, right? As it's not so bad now because the lights are on, but yeah. anyway. It's got yeah, a, yeah. a feel to it, like, I mean, obviously you know that the elderly lived here towards the end again. It's one of those usual places, isn't it? It's come towards the end of their family life, and yeah. it, clearly it's become abandoned. I should say clearly. My mm. educated guess is it's become abandoned because the elderly people have passed away. Yeah, yeah. seems like it. Yeah. Oh, good. I did not realise that was the staircase. Yes. Oh. oh, mate, that's... I, do you know what? I've got bad vibes about that staircase. If that is a staircase, that's from every single horror mover ever. Mover. Movie, <laughs> in fact. <laughs> yes. Look at it. I am looking at it. I'm, have you looked at it? Well, how do you know no. if you haven't looked I at saw it? a door, a very narrow door, yeah. and then you said it's a staircase, yeah. and automatically I thought horror movie. Ready? It's freaky deaky, mate. Look at that. It's freaky oh, it's deaky. Ram. Right there. Oh, mate, yeah. That's gorgeous. I like that a lot. Um, Let's have a look downstairs first before we go to the yes. freaky deaky, is it? And Rambo Dude, the way the way he said that's gorgeous reminded me of how Gordon Ramsay talks about like really good dishes. He's like, that's gorgeous. So when he tastes eats something, he's like, that is gorgeous. That is that is beautiful. Shit. Oh cool. Jeez Louise, man. Oh look at the door as well. Oh, wow. I'm all excited. Look at the door. It is cool though, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's so addictive. I wanna fucking open it up. <laughs> like phasmophobia. Door, <laughs> 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 oh, hello. 
mate, just imagine if it's just some fucking wobbly head just like... Oh, no. Looking at you. Oh, uh, mate, and there was, a little, was there was a little shadow on there as well. Oh, just no. It was just getting me right on the edge here. Oh. oh. No. Was it his garage? <laughs> is it? Yeah. Is that you or the garage? I can smell. That... That is rough. What? That's like an episode of Hoarders right there. That makes me uncomfortable. I don't know about you guys, but I hate when stuff is like just piled up like this. I've been in houses where stuff is piled up almost to the ceiling and it makes you creeped out. It gives you the, the heebie-jeebies uh, because you don't know what's in there. There could be bugs. There could be dead animals. There could be who knows, right? I mean, people, I mean, animals have literally been like killed because they would get like lost and buried underneath stuff like this and they would starve. And, and it's just like, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> what are you doing? What is going because, there? <laughs> because it could be the entrance of hell. Well, that even better then. I mean, the coolest thing about this, not the coolest thing, but the very cool thing is all the old cars here. There's a lot of land up there, which we were just walking around. That's so cool. Lots of really old. That is really cool. That reminds me of like, uh, what is that show? Um, The Last of Us? That's what that reminds me of. I mean, I don't know how old, but they're old, old. Apart from that one over there, it's like a box of course or something. Just, uh, Close some of the curtains, so. Oh wow! Look, they've got the the phones and watches. Things are so personal. Mm. Like how many years and what did they do with their life while they were wearing this watch and the things that they went through and so. This on. newspaper dates back to 2021, mm. so it's been abandoned for at least at least two three years. years. Two weird two years. Yeah. Two or three years. Yeah. It's been abandoned longer than that. It's probably. Mm. Just like you never know, that could course. be other Urbex's spores just coming in here and just <laughs> reading, reading, it, yeah. reading the newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Cool. Also, sell by date or use by date on these um, butters. In the butters. Oh mate, uh, this 2019. Me, these remind me of when I was a kid, Christmas time. I would have that plate for Christmas dinner, <laughs> and then you have the food. <laughs> <laughs> I would obviously have food on it, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. But that's the size of it. Fucking I used to be like, Mum, bring out the plate. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it reminds me of? Weatherspoons. That's where we went for Christmas now. Oh, yeah? Oh. <laughs> you went to Weatherspoons for Christmas, did <laughs> yeah. you? Oh, my God, they got the car keys done up there. Oh, my God. That's pretty mad, isn't it? You see if one of those stars. Yes, <laughs> I've been that way. <laughs> That's cool, though. It's crazy. Let's have a little check up here. Yeah, there, like, there is something, like, kind of special. I don't know what it is. It's a weird feeling you get, but when you see, like, let's say the, the situation they're in where you go into one of these houses that's kind of abandoned, but you see that the per the person who lived there just kind of left it, and all their stuff is still sitting in the house, their keys, the way that, you know, their cell phones and watches, and, and just things that they just completely abandon. There's something very cool and weird about it. Like, I, I can't explain it. It might be just an explorer's kind of intuition or just that feeling you get when you see all that, but it's kind of neat. I, yeah, it's weird. Oh, there's that, the house from the sky. Maybe you can understand what I'm saying. We are finding a lot of houses where they've How had, they had like, drones back drones. there. <laughs> What's the thing? Oh, I, I, remember, I remember years ago, it used to be somebody that used to knock on the door, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be knocking on the door and say, hi, um, we've taken a photo of your house. And they just, <laughs> honestly, they, yeah. would get a, they would get a helicopter, a fucking plane, whatever, mm. yeah. take photos, and then they would just go and knock on the, the village or whatever and say, do you want to buy that? Yeah. I think we actually did buy one. Uh, but it's got to be, surely. I don't know, I can't actually see the house on it, though. So, unless they've been gone. <laughs> we've got yeah. a picture of someone else's house. It's cheaper. <laughs> a house that we always wanted. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't know, but whatever. It's not, not, that's a clock there, isn't it? Or is no, it that's Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, clock. Before you say clock. Right, let's got this stairs then, shall we? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wait, no, that? I don't know. My phone does that sometimes. I oh, don't God. know what it is. Oh, okay. I thought you'd just been possessed. <laughs> 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 okay. AI possession. <laughs> Mate, this is dodgy as shit, man. <laughs> Make sure you get my good side, yeah? Hang on. Ben. Which one's that? Ben. Ben. Yeah. You go first, because if you die, that's not a good idea. <laughs> I think this is the first I'm time. I'm Rambo this shit. Yeah. You hear that? Fucker, yeah. This is the first time anyone's actually ever gone first with us, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> I've got my wide angle on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, guys, this is really weird up here, mate. This is fucking horrible. Cool. Oh God! Yeah. Oh my! I'm gonna turn oh my, my lights off. Is there another? Oh no! There's another stairs up there to the No! Loft. It goes oh, up even higher. Watch this floor, man. Shit me! 
I don't think, I think we should spread out. <laughs> what, just lay down? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, the... Wow. If I don't die here, then mm. somehow else will. I get on... This is it's making me tight. claustrophobic, man. I can only imagine how tight spaced this is. I'm getting already uncomfortable. Tight. Yeah, mm. I know. All the blood would go to your bloody head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that a clock on? This is 9.26 on it. Where? Hey, the ele electric on. That clock is definitely on, isn't it? Nuh-uh. Yeah, it's on. Yeah. Oh my God, got electric. Oh, wow. What the hell? Oh no. Oh dear. Cool, wicked. Okay. That's insane. That happens a lot more often yeah. than you think as well. That's really not a rare thing anymore. No. You need to get the electric board now. Come on, someone get in the abandoned house, let's go! <laughs> no, hopefully not, but... <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea to go up there. That looks is... dangerous, yeah. That actually looks a lot like the attic that's next to me. If you, I, I don't know if I'll ever show you. I'll probably show you at some point, but that attic looks almost dead on just like that. Well, if he dies, we know it's not good at it. Mate, it's, 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 it's bigger than I thought she, That's bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> she said. We hear stuff. that a lot. <laughs> Whoa, what the hell, man. I couldn't even imagine I'm the mold, man. man. The lights in the house. Oh, yeah. Mate. That's about it. Shit, this is dodgy. Oh, wow. Oh, look, 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 another. Is that like the en suite? It looks, <laughs> well, I think there's a door up there that goes into it as well. Yeah, it I think is. it goes to the same room. Oh! Look at that King Tut head! That actually looks a lot like the one behind me on that shelf. You can kind of see it next to Jasper back there. That's kind of cool. Oh my god, mate. If you go for a look at all the stuff forever, couldn't you? All the Look at the knife stuff. on there, what the fuck? Oh shit. Just a knife Whoa, sticking in the bed. This, is it? Okay, that house is literally just there, so. Mm. Turn the lights off in there. Yeah. Mine off? Mine's off. Look at that, it's literally just that. I don't know if they'd ever see us, because it's like every curtain <clears throat> is shut. You never know, though. I say, when we go into night vision, anyway. Yeah, we won't have lights on once we've... Are we going to go upstairs? You... That looks... I've got to be honest, that looks real dodgy, that stairs up there. I love a quick look. I think the higher you go, the more dodgy it's going to be. Yeah. This seems pretty sturdy. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's what oh, you I'm say. Oh, I'll tell you what, you don't want to come up here. It's horrible. Oh. It's just, there's no floor. Yeah, this is what I thought. Right. There's old suitcases and shit, which are pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. You'd yeah, have I to, you'd have to like sit on the steps, like on the very tip top of the steps if you ever do, like do a session up there. That's no god there, guys, just yeah. for the safety. But, yeah, so unless we hear any noises up there, that are yeah. rats. But I've shown it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we... Last thing you want is to go into one of these abandoned places, which apparently, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be in there or not. They said they don't want the neighbors to see them, basically. So, like, if you ever, like, were to get hurt in that place, like you broke your leg or went to the floor and you, like, I'm paled by a piece of wood or something, you'd have no choice but to call 911, and then they would ask you, why the hell were you in that building in the first place? And then you kind of have to explain that, that, and then, uh... Cool, right, let's go back downstairs. Yeah. But like, I've, because I know that these guys don't do any um, uh, gadgets and toys and stuff like that, but I have got a box of toys. <laughs> well, I've got to be honest, I've shown them already, <laughs> but I'm going to show you. Yeah. What you got? That's my jumper, that's not a toy. Right. So, <laughs> by the way, this is not my lunchbox. My missus went out ghost hunting at, at her work, at her work, and she put it all in a box, so you can cut that bit out. Right, so I've got this thing, which is a look. Oh, that's like pretty cool. Some ghosty wosties there, look. And because I reacted to one of their videos the other day, and um, was it you, Elliot? That said it I feel really like hot. I feel like Casper's site is the Dr. Seuss of the paranormal world, because of all the rhymes he makes. When you walk back, I yeah. Think both of you, but yeah, yeah, you said it was really hot when you walked back in. Yeah, it was just yeah. stifling. So, temperature at the moment is 18. Yeah. Mm, that's good. So, 17. Yeah. Mm. Hopefully we find some cold spots tonight. And I've got this. Okay. Oh. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Look at you go. I ain't going to keep that on. 
Hmm. I've got this prism thing, yes. I think it's a yes, no, but I think it, it does it for movement. If something's on to the left, it will light up, and something's on the right of that. I've got some cat balls because I've seen on telly once. <laughs> Analog as well. <laughs> um, You're the first person we've seen bring analog cat balls. Yeah. They're usually electronic ones. Oh, I've yeah. got an electronic one as well, mate. Well, a battery one, look. Do you want that one? Yeah. Hey, that's going off there, look. You know, that's not a bad idea, actually, getting the cat balls that actually don't light up and actually having ones that can make that jingling sound. I actually dig that. That's not a bad idea because the electric ones, I mean, they could probably malfunction. Who knows what could go wrong with them and yada yada. People freak out over the... Every time they go off, someone's like losing their minds that their cat ball is going off. And it's like, well, if that one actually gets physically moved, you'll hear it. It's kind of not... I actually like that. I, not nice. Nice on that part. And I've got a this as well. I've got another one. Have you got a cat? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've got some cat balls. <laughs> and I've got this. Movement sensor. Let's put this on here. We box. need that. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. Let's calibrate it. Don't bother using this um, camera footage, by the way, because I'm all over the shop. <laughs> Hang on. There we go. Let's, where should we put it? Put it here? There? Yeah. Yeah. Put, well, I mean, there's a corridor we could... It's calibrating. Okay. And then... That's pretty much it. Does it play music? It, do, it should do. <laughs> it's not a very good song, is it? It's the remix. <laughs> sounds like the oh. sounds like that song that's in that uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog episode with uh, Ramses. That end credit oh, song. Fuck, you know, maybe jump. <laughs> oh, hang on. It's the oh the pl the things the things. The plastic band things is in there. Is it in there? Do you think? Let me see if it's in the box here. So once the amateur had stopped messing around, we decided to get on with some actual ghost hunting. Now, for some reason, when we walked in the building, the lounge just seemed the best place to be. So we decided to start there. OK. Look at me, night vision. Oh, look at me, <laughs> look at me. What are we doing now? We are... We... Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've waited for someone to speak. Patience. <laughs> we're, so we're calling out to any spirits. Hopefully, um... You know by now that we don't mean you harm, we don't mean any disrespect to the property. Um, we're, we're here to find out if there's life after death and we hope that you can communicate with us if you are here. My name's Joe. My name's Elliot. And my name's Ben. If you're here, are you able to make a sound? Is it your ankle then? I haven't moved. I had a boop boop. Can you come and communicate with us if you're here? If you're upset about us being in your home, we are sorry, but we need, mean no harm, no disrespect. We just wanted to see if maybe you have a message or that was me. you're happy. That's me, yeah. sorry. It's the floorboard. Okay. And you know, I feel like I hear small things in the background and they're not really jumping on it. And I think that's kind of important to show because where a lot of investigators today would actually start making that a big deal they're not really going to do that, it doesn't seem, because the reality is, it's an old house. It's got a lot of openings probably to the outside. It's probably crumbling apart. So even the slightest noise off in the distance, it's probably just the house settling in and doing its thing. And like how he just said that it was his foot moving on the floorboards. It's nice to see that someone's pointing that stuff out. I'm actually a big fan of that. Because not everything is automatically going to be just paranormal related, just because they want it to be coincidentally paranormal related. It's just the house. Especially these older houses, which I guarantee you almost 90% of these investigations you see anymore are taking place at a really old location. 
You're going to have to acknowledge that stuff. That's something I'm probably going to do when I start doing paranormal investigations is really acknowledge the the age of the house and, and maybe like things that you might not even think of, like how thin the windows are, right? I mean, if the windows are thin, maybe some wind gets through them and maybe it will cause something. Uh, things like that are just important to kind of point out. I think to your audiences to let them know that hey before you start really freaking out over something that might be in the background doesn't mean it's paranormal it could be just the house make a sound somewhere to direct us where you want us to go please Can you make this sound for me? Can I hear an aeroplane or something rumbling? I think I can hear something outside, yeah. I can hear the birds. The thing is, you can literally see outside here through the walls, mm -hmm. so the sound is not going to be yep. blocked. There's holes in the wall, yep. Please, we do We invite you to make communication. And by now, you would notice that a lot of channels would already be, like, buried in shit right now. But this is actually, we're 17 minutes in, and nothing's happened yet. Nothing. With us. That isn't an aeroplane. Yeah, it doesn't sound like, it almost sounds like, you know when somebody rocks mm. and it's upstairs, like somebody, mm. like a, oh, like I can't make the sound, but. Yeah. Give me one sec. <laughs> is it my, is it this floorboard? I can't no, it's, it's like, I can, can hear it. it again there, yeah, hang on one second. Apparently if you open your mouth, you can hear better. Mm. Yeah, that's why I've, I've <laughs> always got my mouth open. <laughs> If there's a spirit here, please, please. That guy looks just like my old boss I used to have at Walmart. Like, just like him. Just make a sound. Crazy. What was that? Oh, like? That was something over there. Yeah. Right behind you, Jack. Was it not where I just moved my arm? Was it? I don't know. I didn't even hear anything. It sounded like a... Yeah, like that. it did sound like a... Ch that over here. Yeah, literally, like... Oh, fucking hell, that's freaking me out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, it's probably something, because you've got holes here, right? You've yeah. got holes, holes, there's probably something outside, but it's still... I didn't even hear it. It, really it was like a shuffle over there mm. in the corner. I didn't shuffle. Yeah? Yeah, it does kind of sound like something kind of dragging a little bit dragging but i do think casper site might be on point i think he him acknowledging that it could be something outside is probably the probably the most logical option I'm not saying it's not paranormal but it's probably the most logical thing because look at the look at the place i mean it has so many holes and so many access to the outside it's like that's no surprise if that was you and it was your attempt to communicate with knock. us can you do it again please knock there was a there was a knock as you were okay. talking, I promise you. And again? Oh, that was me moving my Oh, okay. Oh, well, right, right. No, no. Okay, it's so... Okay. It's amazing how your senses just go... It's like yeah. a daredevil. Yeah. It is incredible, because then people say, I, I can't hear what you're talking yeah. about. But yeah. when you hear, it's like... You it's, hear great. it's great for me being here after watching you two. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is what you do. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm doing what you guys do. Like, <laughs> Did you hear that? I'm like, what? what? Yeah. <laughs> what? But I can hear it, yeah? Yeah. Are you able to move? 
the device on the middle of the table next to the water bottle there's there's a ball can you can you move it just to know that just to let us know that you can understand us I'm scared. I'm even scared to talk myself because I'm scared I'm going to miss something because <laughs> I'm waiting for something to happen, but nothing's happening. And look, sometimes you go on paranormal investigations. This is the reality. This is like most of the time the reality. You don't catch as much as you're hoping, but that's also it, it makes you passionate to finally catch something. It's going to make that, that, that feeling when you finally get that first bit of evidence, it's going to feel a lot more accomplishing, you know? So I, I, I'm, again, I dig it. I like this. This is good. And these guys are like almost, didn't they say like just hit 100,000 subscribers? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they just hit 100,000 subscribers. And this is one of their investigations and not a whole lot is happening. Nothing like crazy like Sam and Colby stuff or Twin Paranormal or whatever have you, which I already kind of have said the reason why a lot of those videos are really always something happening is because they make it paranormal they make the small things in the background feel like it could be possibly a ghost these guys aren't really that yet like these guys aren't doing that so yeah not everything is happening in the background is automatically going to be like oh that's a ghost uh no it's just they know the reality of the situation Is that upstairs? Yeah. That was right above me. <clears throat> there you go. Where's that coming from? I don't know. It's so faint though. Yeah. It's almost so faint you think it's your imagination. Mm. Yeah, but we all hear it. Yeah. Let's have a look on a different Should we go to the kitchen? Mm. But I gotta be I gotta be honest with you, I feel in here, right? Mm. And I don't know because it's obviously darker and your senses get heightened, but when I'm in there on my own, I do feel a little bit like watched. Yeah. I think we're going to be revisiting that room. I have yeah. got that feeling. Yeah, but Are I will say, really? I will say, him, him acknowledging, I think Casper Sight acknowledging that when he's in there by himself and with the lights off and everything and he feels like he's being watched, that is, I think, a natural feeling to get when you're doing something like this. So he did say it in a way that kind of made me think that it was actually his own per like personal um, paranoia that might be getting to him because he is a little bit spooked out. He is getting a little bit paranoid the way he's acting. So I think that is important to at least acknowledge. Thus now... You have a beautiful home. We just want to find out if you are okay. If you don't want to be in the same room as us, can you make a loud noise from a different room? Let me just get my, sorry, let me just get my thermometer in here because it does mm. I know it's a bigger open area but it seems a lot colder in here let me just go and get that because yeah. it was 17 18 in that room wasn't it yeah I don't know if um, when you go into somewhere if you feel a temperature change mm. is it a actual temperature change or is it a feeling because it feels cold in here but it is 17.5 in there is 18. So it's not dropped <laughs> dramatically. It does feel colder in here, though, doesn't it? A it does, lot yeah. colder in here. Yeah. Mm. It does feel like you're breathing in colder air. Mm. A sudden change in, in air temperature, a sudden rush of cold air can quite often be put down as paranormal. It's something that has been classed as paranormal for many years. Having cold spots is something where people say, oh, it must mean there's a ghost in the room with you drawing your energy away. Now, the strange thing about this house is each of the rooms felt like completely different temperatures, even though they were actually the same temperature. Now, obviously, if you touch metal and fabric in the same room, they're the same temperature, but the metal feels colder because it's drawing the energy away from it, it's drawing the heat away from your hand. 
But how does that work with air? Because it's all the same air. How does the air in one room feel colder than the other, even though the room is actually exactly the same temperature? Is that paranormal or is, is there an actual scientific explanation to that? We did invest. It could go either way at that point. I'm sure. I'm sure somebody would have an actual scientific explanation for it. I have something. Something just tells me there's somebody out there who would probably know the answer to that. But um, I actually have uh, had situations like that before, um, where I'm no joke. I have the AC on and everything, and the room is actually at a good temperature. It's cold as heck, and it's feeling really good. And all of a sudden, I have had it happen to me several times, where all of a sudden, nowhere else in my body but my head, I felt something like really cold really cold like ice water cold walk over felt like something moving over my face even though i already know what the air conditioner felt like because i was already laying in it and my room was already a good temperature but something like ice cold water cold walked over started putting its like hand like it felt like almost like like something pressing down on my head and moving around a little bit and then it would like move away and it I've had it happen like once or twice in this room in the same exact spot, feel ready to have the same exact thing happen, and it only happened a couple times. It was very bizarre, very weird. I will say that I have no explanation for that. A lot of people might say it was the air conditioner. Maybe the air just blew in a certain way, but the air was like it was it was it never happens because it was just perfectly still. Like the cold air was still in my room, yet that happened. It was weird. It was bizarre. I just have no explanation. There's no fan in my room. It was just the AC on, and then all of a sudden something even colder walked over and affected me. It was bizarre in the kitchen for quite a while but it was just very quiet so we decided to get some equipment out and head upstairs to see if we could actually capture some paranormal activity on this amazing channel that's called ghost theory that we're supposed to get some paranormal activity in it happens some equipment on in here it happens and sometimes it doesn't i mean that's the reality right yeah, yeah see that's 18.6 in here is that on no no not yet mate no so i um I think we should put it on here to get like the main. Yeah, yeah. It's a good idea. Right. So if that goes off now, something's moved in there. I'll put this down this corridor. Yeah. I'm just intrigued, man. Where is Got a feeling about that in there. Yeah. See, it's weird. I know you guys don't feel it. I feel something in here. Do you? Yeah. That's why I'm going to put that there. Cool. That's just resetting. Aww. Look at all those birds. Cool. That reminded me of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the basement, like the remake of the basement. Okay. Yeah, bang it. Where's... What the fuck? This is the only known evidence or footage of the man... Uh, of Thomas Hewitt, the man also known as Leatherface. Mate, what the actual F? Are you having a laugh with that? Where's Joe? He's up there. He's upstairs. What, what the fuck? Is it, is it got to be calibrated or something? I might, yeah, I might need to calibrate it again. <laughs> the REM pod's just doing the fucking... Oh, malfunctioning. That's calibrated now. Okay, let's go upstairs. Okay, me. If anybody's here, yeah. To be fair, that REM pod did look like it kind of was going a little bit off topic, like it, off topic, but like a little bit of a malfunction there. I mean, it started freaking out. So we'll see if it goes off please again. Please try and make contact. We have now. We set up some devices downstairs, so if you don't want to be near us, you can go near them. There's one in the living room on the cabinet. It would just make a weird noise. And there's a aerial type circular thing in the hallway downstairs that will also oh, make geez, a, man. Calm, a noise. Careful. If you could go near them while we're all here, that'd be fantastic. Or make a noise in here. We're not asking you because we so think... Sound. You want to hear that? I was, it was behind you. Oh, okay. You didn't hear it. I swear I just heard that. I could have sworn I just heard something plasticky being like... Yeah. It's annoying, though, isn't it? Because you get your imagination going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could have been Casper's sight, because he was moving around a little bit, so I, I think it, he probably heard something from Casper. You never know, but 
If that was you, could you just do it again for us, please? All this equipment that we've got in the house around your house here, it's not to try to catch you out or be disrespectful. It's literally just, we're having a, a bit of fun. Um, we mean no harm. We just want to find out if there is anybody here. That was low-key wholesome. I don't think I've ever heard a paranormal investigator say something like that before. Like, explain the equipment, but he's like, we're just here to have fun. We're not trying to be disrespectful or anything. Man, you know, if, I'm going to be honest. If some of these other paranormal investigators opened up their videos like that, telling the spirits that we're just here to have fun, we're not trying to be disrespectful or anything, so we're hoping that you don't take it that way. I almost feel like that would actually kind of make me feel better about some of the times they would be disrespectful. Because at least they came in with, like, good intentions of just having fun, and it wasn't meant to be taken that way. And at least the spirits would know that. But when you go into a location and you start, like, you know, jumping around, breaking shit, and, I mean, that's never acceptable. Let's be real. That, that shit is never acceptable. But at least that kind of felt, I felt that was kind of wholesome. It's like, okay, well, that was nice of you to at least say. I appreciate that. Look at that doll sitting on top of the uh, mirror thing on the wall. Music box or REM pod goes off, mate. <laughs> I've got a funny feeling about this. Can you set off that device downstairs in the hallway? Yeah, you just have to walk close to it. Don't have to touch it, just walk close to it. It won't hurt you. We'll just pick up on your energy. It sounded like something outside, didn't it? Yeah. I think that sounded like the window. There's nothing out there. It sounded like a tap on the window. Yeah. Like, ah. It was that. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? No. I did not hear I that. Said, man. <laughs> Sorry if I did. I heard you move. Yeah, but I don't know if you were moving because you heard something. Hurt right now. If that was you, you make it louder. Yeah, this room's not giving me anything. <laughs> mm. I'm not getting any vibe. So we're going to do like 20 minutes over there, and then we can sort of just try the room that we all feel this thing. Yeah. Yeah. What about in here, though? The bathroom. Oh. What? Oh, REM pod. That's the fucking REM pod. What? REM pod. Yeah. If that's you, could you step away from the REM pod, please? Can you step away from that REM pod, please? Thank you very much. That went higher. I can't hear it. I feel like I can still hear it. Have you stepped away from it or are you closer to it? I can hear it. I can't hear it now. Just try to move as far away as you can from it, please. No, it's still going. What does it do when it's calibrating? It can't have calibrated that. What the fuck? Yeah. It's never done that before. What the fuck? What, what the fuck? What, what is that? Mate. I've got the fucking chicken, mate. <laughs> yes, wicked. Let's now go down to that room, shall we? Was that, was that? The, no, well, let's just try it one more time. Oh, man, I've literally got the fucking chicken. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing that. That's uh, made the journey uh, <laughs> very much worth it. Could you try again, please? Now, just walk, see, I told you, it doesn't hurt you, does it? 
So if you could walk to it again and try to make it sound off again, please. I know I'm talking to you like you're a performing monkey. I don't mean to do that, but it's exciting when these things happen. I gotta say, Casper Sight's coming off like a very wholesome investigator. I don't know, I just, I like the low-key moments like that, where he kind of explains it, I, like he's not trying to, you know, he's not, how he just said that. I, I don't know, man, it's, it's winning me over quite a bit, how he said, uh, you know, we know, I know we're talking to you like you're a performing monkey, but it's just exciting when things like this happen, so we're not meaning any disrespect about it. I don't know, I don't know, it's just, that's a good, I like that. I don't know, I, I like that he's explaining that. You know, and look, Casper Seitz probably watched many investigations, so it's just naturally in his head that this is how, you know, people will react to your paranormal investigations, or this is how you should react in paranormal investigations. And, uh, of course, I watch paranormal investigations to kind of avoid things like that, to try to do things differently. But uh, it might be literally just a, a kind of a, a personal thing to where it's just, and this is how he naturally talks to him, because he just, he's seen so many investigations. And that's how normally people talk to ghosts. It's kind of like the performing monkeys, or they're kind of like, you know, just not really like another person. You know, like they're talking down to them like children or whatever have you. <gasps> it sounded like running. Okay. Did you not hear that? No, man, I wish to do, do. I didn't hear that. And my hearing's good, like. Yeah, I can hear that. Should we go to the REM pod? Mm. That's what people say to do, that they want oh, okay. us to okay. yeah, run at it. Oh, really? Okay. What the fuck was that? Whoa! What? That's still. I don't know what. Okay. Is that like. Is it supposed to be doing that? What? Shit. What the fuck? It's like it's on, but it's not. It's flashing, but no is it sound. Is running out of battery or something? Well, yeah. I just replaced the battery. Because the last time we. Walk to it now, mate. It looks like it. What the fuck? Yeah, it looks like it's dying. Turn it on and off again. Yeah. Mm. What the fuck? Yeah, what the hell? Where's the battery? Is it there? Oh. Hmm. Take the battery out and... That looks like it's run out of battery, mate. The REM pod is something that we keep bringing up in interviews in every episode because the REM pod keeps on going off and then when it goes off, it seems to just stay on. But the battery was changed in the episode just before this, so it is realistically a brand new battery. Now, I think it's mad to say that every single time the REM pod goes off, it's just a dying battery. Like, at some point, it has to be something else. But in this one, it was almost like it was completely killing the energy. It was drawing the energy away from the battery because it did actually die at the end of it. So we've only had this REM pod or had the battery this REM pod for a few hours, realistically, and something has then completely removed the energy from it. So is that paranormal or just yet again another dead battery? So we always test the REM pod at home and it never actually goes off at home. It only goes off during an investigation, which is quite weird. Now. If it's down to a low battery, the last time that we had a weird thing happen with the REM pod, we also put it down to a low battery. But this time it acted entirely different. I would recommend getting another REM pod. Uh, just try getting another REM pod and see if it does something similar or do the same thing, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe just the REM pod in general. Maybe not the battery. Maybe it's just the REM pod for all I know. Uh, but, but I don't know. I haven't, you know, I can't experiment with it or anything, that specific one. But yeah, I'd recommend doing something like that. Try to get another REM pod, see if it works better. If it doesn't die so fast, then maybe it's just the REM pod, uh, for all I know. But hey, it's interesting. Front. And again, we've put it down to a low battery. So can it realistically always be a low battery, especially as I know, which I can't prove, that I always put new batteries in it when I think it's getting low? And that was a fresh battery from the last investigation as well. 
And if you want to go down the lines of, well, there's a malfunction with the REM pod, okay, maybe there is, but only once it's set off does it continue to, you know, to go off, but it still has to be set off for it to have that malfunction in the first place. The, the reason we started recording um, is because this is another one of my gadgets. Thank you very much. Okay, I've forgotten who sent me it, but thank you, you're a bloody legend. Uh, it's another one of my gadgets, and we put it down, and straight away, the left-hand side, my left, started coming up saying it, it's got movement. I just thought maybe it's calibrating. And then Joe went to the right-hand side, and the right-hand <coughs> um, side lit up. But then again, the left. So we started recording, because that's a bit odd, because there's nothing to the left of us, only when Joe moved to the right here. So I'm just going to check it out, see if there's any sort of weird stuff. I don't know what that is. I think that might be just sensing. I'm not yeah, too I sure. Yeah, I think that's just in the middle. Is it nothing's yeah. happening? But I thought that was a yes, no prism, which yeah. would ask it questions, right? Yeah, it's like that's greens, it yes, and but that's reds, like, no. Yeah, because so you ask it a question and then the, the spirit should move either to the left or the, to the right, okay? Mm. So let's ask some questions, shall we? Yeah. yeah. So if you're happy for us to be here, and doing what we're doing, move to this side, please, my left. And if you are unhappy about us being here, can you move to the right-hand side of the table, my right-hand <coughs> side? So left for OK, right for not so OK. Is that supposed to happen? No. Was I recording? No. I wasn't. No. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I was, man, because I pressed the... I pressed... Oh, yeah, you I, I, actually, I have yeah. done this before. Yeah. <laughs> can you just go up to the, the device with the blue lights and just touch it first of all so we know that you can actually use it? Mm. So the device on the table, the round table in the middle of the living room. I will say, I will say, I've noticed, I noticed this in a lot of videos where people will consistently ask the spirit, even if something doesn't happen the first time or the second time, they'll uh, consistently ask the spirit to do something with the object that's in the center of the table or the object that they're wanting something to happen with, and they'll continuously ask those questions until something happens and then make it paranormal, right? Um, I think for my investigations, I will ask the question at least twice tops, and if nothing happens, I'm done with that object, right? Because at that point, it would be me just waiting for something to happen with it, just so I can have some bit of evidence. So I think that's where I would completely just stop asking questions if the, the item is just not getting anything done with it. Again, I kind of look for consistency. If I have to ask the question three times to four times to five times, it's obviously at that point I can just kind of debunk it as the item going off by itself and not something being inspiring it to go off, right? So... I give spirits a lot more credit than I think. I, I want to give spirits a lot more credit than I think most. I'm not saying these guys don't give the spirits credit or anything like that, so please don't get, get it mixed up. But this is just something I want to talk about while the subject is like happening. Uh, that they're a lot more smarter and a lot more, they can be a lot more consistent than I think people give them credit for. People use the excuse that it takes a lot of energy to do certain things, and maybe, it's, maybe it does, we don't really know, but... I want to believe that the spirits, if they really want to communicate and they want to use the items that I present to them, and if it's consistent, then I'll believe it's a spirit. But if it's not consistent and it's something I have to ask over and over again, I'm just going to debunk it as not being paranormal. Again, it won't hurt you. Are you somewhere in this house? Holy... <laughs> Thank you. Have you only just got here? Is that why it's been pretty quiet?
So that means you've been here all this time. Do you find it difficult to make contact? Are you by the fireplace? So you touching something? I think my leg, my right <laughs> leg is against the... But hang on, let me just try it again. Yeah, sorry. Okay, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need help? I've got a funny feeling that you might be by the fireplace. Does that, I bet that heats the house up so well when it's burning, right? Isn't there something about the, one of these fires, the smell and the crackle? I suppose uh, you might have a lot of memories of doing that, maybe at Christmas time, putting the logs on the fire, you know, you've got the family around, the kids playing. I can just imagine you now being like, step, step away from the fire, it's hot. Protecting your kids, yeah? I keep hearing taps and stuff, and not. Yeah, but that, that might be just the house, because again, it's an old ass house. I understand that, the knocks and whatnot, but it, it's a very fucking old house. I mean, that could literally be something kind of getting ready to give out and just making slight popping sounds. So, uh... See, right now, this, uh, I don't, I, I don't really have a whole lot of personal reasons to believe this abandoned house is haunted, like, at all. Uh, they really haven't caught much of anything. Um, and I, I do like this investigation because I do find it to be just more realistic and, and whatnot. And I know right now that they definitely want something to happen, but uh, it just does not look like that's going to be the case for this investigation. Uh, barely anything is happening. We're only, we're only, like, less than 20 minutes away from finishing it. So it's probably pretty safe to say that this place is just not not haunted, and you know that's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the the, I, the device did go off that one time, this one they're using right now, the prism, but it only happened after they've asked questions five to six times to seven times, and then finally something happens, and uh, it just there's no consistency in that. So I just don't buy it. Mm. And even if you seem to be hearing it, I feel like I'm losing my mind. <laughs> Can you copy me? Please, can you copy this? Bloody hell. Easy, mate, it's not building. <laughs> that was odd it going off on the left again. Mm. Because that was like a good, what, three minutes of nothing, and then it just popped up. Yeah. That's just, that's yeah. not right, is it? But you could also, like, you could also argue that it just, it's it naturally will do that at some point if waited long enough, right? So, I mean, yeah, we could probably say, you, could, you can go ahead and say it could be possibly paranormal, but for me, it just, it doesn't have consistency in it. And that, again, that's the thing I look for is consistency in that. That just, too many questions were asked, waited too long, and then something happened. But no, I get it. Please, please make contact with us. You don't have to be scared if you're here. Can you walk in front of the device in the corridor? Again, we don't mean any harm. I moved, but... Yeah, but... 
that's th what you uh, what are you telling us there? I'm not too close to him, am I? No, you the shouldn't. I just saw you move your camera to your other hand. Yeah, I did yeah, that. Yeah, up but... there. Yeah, that wouldn't have got it, mate. And like that's, <laughs> I really don't think that would have got it. Thank you so much for moving closer to that. Um, can you can you do it again, please? Because we're not too sure whether it was you, or if it was Joe. So if you record me a minute, mate, because you're, I'm going to try and reenact where you basically was around here, mm. but on your side regularly. So let's just see. Yeah, that's oh, your Christ. No, well, I wasn't even over the table, really. No, was. no. I mean, I mean, it wasn't I really think, anywhere near it, but. No, I mean, you just went from right hand to left hand, didn't you? Yeah. It was about there, wasn't it? I don't think it was even that close, is it? Yeah. So, what we want to know is, we really, really need a distinct answer whether or not you're here in this house. Oh my, yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. That sort of confirms that... Yeah, that's a, a good confirmation, because that was a direct response mm. to something that has not been happening. Yeah. So, well, at least you acknowledge that, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, is it possible we can use this to have a conversation with you? Yeah. Is it something you can do a good idea. to answer questions? Can you touch it again just to say yes, that we can use that device to have a conversation with you? We carried this on for a little while longer and got absolutely no more answers for some reason. So we decided to go off to the only place we hadn't investigated yet, which was the second bedroom with the children's toys and the cleaver. Yeah, talking about the uh, method that you guys just used, I think like that was the most consistent, but it could have been just the timing of the question. That could have been why it went off. To me, it just wasn't consistent enough. It was If it was more consistent, then I would have believed it was probably paranormal. But the fact that it was only that one time when he was asking his questions, you guys were constantly asking questions, I do I do not think that that probably was something paranormal. My personal opinion, of course. You don't have to take it you know, to heart or whatnot, but that's just my opinion. Stuck in the bed. Right. Oh, this place, I don't There's have a light on over there now, so... I don't have good vibes about this place. I don't. This one is, uh, this room's got... I don't know whether it's because it's, it's like a smell in here, cold. Might be mould, yeah. man. Um, it's odd. There's a light on over there now in that house. Oh, shit. <laughs> okay. We're here again, we, just to, to make contact. Oh, a really weird thing about this corridor. I oh, know. <laughs> what was that? What? I, I, that was a massive delay on my part, by the way. It must have been you, but I heard like a... When you said, I don't like this hallway, I'm sure I heard like a... I don't know. Ooh. Like a... Let's just be silent, because I can't actually hear. This is me, by the way. Yeah, we met you earlier. No. <laughs> That's yeah. the floorboard there, yeah. Should we use this? Yeah. Yeah. Is that me? That's odd. Can you stop that? If yeah, that's one you? second. Because if that goes faster, it means they're closer. Oh. Can you move away from that, please? Oh. Can you move away from that, please? The green light, move away from it, please. Let's 
Pleasure. Cool. If there's a spirit here with us now, please make contact. I am not really sensing anything here. What was that? Why did that sound like someone just walked at us? What? Did that not? I, I what? just heard like a dum 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 dum. Did you hear that? No. It was like a. Yeah. What the fuck? I heard that. Hello. So we've come upstairs because maybe, you know, um, it's easier for you because you're up here or somebody else up here just to get a new location, really. But downstairs in the lounge, I think that you managed to approach this blue light and you may want the lights turn on. Could you do it again here, please? Or if there's anybody else here, if you approach this box on this bed here with the blue lights flashing, it will change colour. It doesn't hurt you. So if you could do that, just let us know that you're here. One of those dresses, like, move away. Did he used to live here? I keep hearing bassy sounds now. Which is very common. Are you walking around the building? Fucking knocking, isn't there? That's so light, though. Standing here is just. Hmm. Can you copy me? As a feel. Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I want to hear this walking. <laughs> my heart is literally like in my ear, man. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put this over there then. I feel a bit shaky all of a sudden. What's, uh, mate, what about this place in here, though? He's probably too scared to have Casper standing on? behind him. What, with the lights? No. No, in the bedroom. The bedroom? What light? No, fuck off, you just must have turned, he's turned that off. That's not a great idea with the house. Turn the light off. Right, I'm just joking yeah, I know, with Casper's sight. Like, <laughs> fucking hell. Yeah, fucking Get him hell. back! Just, what a room to do it in. <laughs> <laughs> 
can send up a flare if you want, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you see that? What? <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a boom 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 sound here. Mm. What that means? That door just gets kicked over, like open on his face. That. It's the police. Where did that come from? Eh? Did you just laugh then? No. A fucking. Let me get off this. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, is it that? But I could hear that in here when we weren't in here. Okay, so the the creaking on the floorboards are most likely just the weight of Joe. I mean, like all three of us together, because creaking in an abandoned building is quite a common thing, especially yep. if it's an old building like that. Unless we get something on command, then we don't usually take much notice of it. However, sometimes it is very hard to distinguish and it does create a very creepy vibe that somebody is there watching you. This investigation obviously had to come to an end at some point. Unfortunately, David Attenborough did have quite a long journey home and it was getting quite late, so we had to call it a day. Now, I just want to say that it was absolutely brilliant to have David on the channel. It was an honor to have him as our 100,000 subscriber special. That's cool. And um, I wasn't calling him special, but he's special to us. <clears throat> but, like, thanks. All right. So, before, obviously, being invited onto Ghost Theory, I was like, OK, this is going to be cool because, obviously, reacting to you guys before. Um, but on my way here, I was genuinely just curious of like, what is going to go on? Is it going to be like when I watch you guys on YouTube? And I've got to tell you, it's exactly the same. And um, I was freaked out because obviously, as you know, I'm a bit of a skeptic. But walking in here, it almost felt like... Um, it was almost like a reminder of, hang on, don't rule it out straight away. Don't rule out the paranormal straight away because I did get that weird feeling when I came in here. And then obviously, as we started walking around, I started picking up the smells and the, and the, and the temperature and it all started getting a little bit freaky deaky for me. Um, but I think what really hit hard was first of all when the REM pod went off. Now obviously that could have been the batteries. It seemed like it was the batteries. It may not have been, but it was very, very strange, especially when it started to go like faster and louder and then all of a sudden dip away. And then when we came into the lounge, we started to do the, um, the yes, no prism. That for me, I can't explain. I could, the skeptic part of me say, oh, this was, uh, the battery is low. It could be dust hitting on one of the sensors. It could have been anything. I like would that. say that would be more, you know, for the REM pod. But I would say this would be probably asking questions, and then the time that would pass by asking these questions, and that's when it would go off, and then it could make sense for whatever you're asking. I think the one time it actually made sense was when he asked a question and it went off, but it hadn't gone off the entire time before that, at least for a while. So I think that was just the timing of the question. And because never sure did it I'm again. Go away and be like, yeah, it's probably just a technical issue. However, it was very strange how you ask a specific question and immediately the right-hand red light just turned on. That was strange. 
regarding like the sounds, I was hearing little like rumble, but it was so faint, probably too faint for the microphones. That was also odd, but generally speaking, I'm just so, I'm buzzing about this. It's, it's been so much better than I thought it'd be. I knew I'd have a good time just actually doing the paranormal, you know, doing the hunting. Yeah. But actually having the, the, the REM pod, the, um, the prism, the little bits of noises and just the atmosphere and obviously you guys as well. It's been so good. That's good. I'm glad, well, I'm glad he had fun doing it. Well, I'm glad Casper Sites had a good time doing it. Again, congratulations, you guys, on 100,000 subscribers. I'll have to react to more of your content because I really did enjoy that. I'm glad that you pointed out things that I think most paranormal investigators, again, I'm going to use that term often, uh, just don't point out anymore. And I think it's important. You guys really reminded me of, I mean, you guys really came off genuine. And I, I dig that. I dig that a lot, actually. I think you guys have been recommended to me so often. Or by my maniacs, my uh, audience have recommended you guys so much. And I'm definitely interested to check out more of your content. I think Casper Sight did a great job. I acknowledge that he was a bit of a skeptic and he wanted to try to figure things out. Um, but he also tr kept his mind open, which I think is also something I'm going to be doing, too, is because I do believe in the paranormal. I'm going to keep my mind open to the possibilities but I'm also going to keep my mind uh, kind of laid in reality, too. Um, obviously, I do believe in the paranormal, so um, I believe in both the reality and the paranormal. So, yeah. Having said that, guys, let me know what you think in the comments section. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this, and I will certainly do more. Guys, until next time, please do take care, and I'll see you in the next one. Cause three cards are too You won't be mended